Welcome to video two in this special video series I'm doing with Jory Alston, where he came and is sitting down with me here in my house in Puerto Rico. And on this video, we're gonna talk about a really fun project that he's in, which is a mobile home park. We're gonna talk about how he structured it, what his plans are, how he's gonna exit it, and everything in between. And so all of that and more, coming up. For a limited time, you can get a free copy of Jerry Norton's Virtual Flipper Kit with everything you need to flip houses without seeing them in person. Download it now at virtualflipperkit.com. If you're new here, I'm Jerry Norton. I make millions of dollars a year flipping houses, and here on my YouTube channel, I show you how to do the same. So if you want to be a flipping genius like me and live your dream life, subscribe to my channel and watch my videos. Jory, it's awesome to have you here for video two here. Video two. Yeah, thank you for taking time to do this. You've got so many cool things. We could probably do like 10 videos here <laughs> and it's all good stuff. So guys, uh, Jory really specializes in the creative type of financing and structuring on deals, which really opens up an entire world of possibility. If you missed the first video, go back and watch that. He talked about how he's creating second notes on his deals, selling the first note, keeping the second note as cash flow, really cool. So go watch that video, I'll put the link in the description below if you missed it. But on this video, Jory, I'd love to hear about your mobile home project that you're in. Yeah. So let's kind of take it from you know, maybe where you got into the deal, uh, but it's this kind of like half, half operating or not really operating very well. Not yet. <laughs> you come in, yeah, not yet. You come in with private money, take down the deal, and so let's talk about it. Where's this deal at? So this deal is, uh, it's in a town called Meadville, Pennsylvania. Okay, Pennsylvania. Which is like a little bit south of Erie, PA. Okay, so if you guys know where that is, <laughs> how, many unit, how many lots is it? It's a 52 lot, 30, 32 acres, 52 lots. And, uh, okay, so big lots. Yeah, big lots. Yeah, yep. big lots. A lot of land. So when we bought it, there were 19 lots, 20 lots that were actually filled up at the moment. So we got okay. about 22 vacant. Okay, and if you guys understand how mobile homes work, you know, you own the lot and then you put the home on it, but the home is mobile, so you can pick them up and move them, right? It's not attached to the foundation. Correct. So then you kind of have two things. You have the land or the lot, which usually a mobile home owner or tenant, you know, they have a lot fee. They have a lot fee, yeah. Sometimes then so the, the rent. So the lot fee is like rent and then they have, if, if you're a park that has, has park-owned homes, yeah. then you might rent the homes and the lot fee, right? Okay. But you, you want to have no park on homes. You want to just have the tenants paying you rent for the lot fee. Yeah. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually owner finance the homes to them. So we'll have a separate company that actually owner finances the trailers to the homeowners. They'll pay that company the mortgage and then our other company will collect the rent fee, the lot gotcha. fee. Gotcha. So a little bit of a yeah, tricky yeah. there. So let's break it down. So you get into this development, 52 lots, only you said 19? 19. 19 have homes on them. Yep, yep. So then you got these empty lots, not doing anything, not making any money, just kind of like wasted inventory, really. Yeah, yeah. So clearly underdeveloped or under operated. Yeah, I'll kind of give you like, so the previous owner had owned this probably about 40 years. Okay. You know, most of these mobile home parks. Definitely checked out then, right? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, their mom and it's a mom and pop owned park. He hasn't even marketed for a new house, I think in 10 years, right? So yeah. he hasn't even, <laughs> there's no marketing for buyers right now, you know? Yeah. So. You know, that's how we got into the deal. It was funny, I actually, a college friend of mine, a college roommate sent me the deal. I, I made a post on Facebook one day, hey, I'm looking for a mobile home park. Didn't own any yet, right? But I'm saying, you know, hey, let's, uh, we do affordable housing with our owner financing, you know, in inner cities. Let's look at the mobile home parks. It's the same exact class, affordable housing, just it's in a rural area, right? Yeah. So I mean, so that's the, that's the ticket, guys. Put a post on Facebook, someone's gonna send you a, a mobile home deal. <laughs> that's how that happened, right? <laughs> And it was funny because the park was actually 20 minutes outside of my son's college. My son's wow. in college right now. So I'm going, you know, I actually look at the deal, look at the numbers. It just seems too good to be true. I mean, the price was like, it was an insane, we got it for 165. 165, the whole park. The whole park, yeah. 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 I think I texted Pace, he was like, is that the whole park? I was, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Is Pace involved on that one? He's not, no. Okay, because I, I know I was, I was, It was my first one, so I'm reaching out to people who yeah. actually do them yeah. and say, hey, you know, I, I like the, you know, to learn from those who are already, you know, already, already have been doing, doing it, it yeah. you know, so. So you buy for 165 with private money? With private money, okay. yep, so we got a private loan. Um, and how long in your private money do you have? This, we have seven years. Okay, so you got a pretty good term with your private money lender, yeah, yeah. But, but we're not talking that much money, I mean, right? Like, it was, yes. That's not very much, 165 <laughs> and you own a mobile home park, a 52 unit mobile home park, that's crazy. This is one of those deals where I'm like, what is wrong, right? So what's wrong with the deal? You know how you always ask them yeah. if it's, like, cause you, even nowadays, you can't find those deals like that. Oh, you can find them, but even when you find them, it's like, what's wrong with this deal, right? So it's I, actually a smart way to analyze. Like you go into a deal looking for what's wrong, because then if you can find all those 
and plug those holes, those holes now you can yeah. put a deal together. So, of course, I did my research, right? So now I'm, I'm on YouTube, just YouTube and mobile home parks, you know, I'm, I'm looking up stuff. <laughs> First red flag, this mobile home park was all private-owned uh, water. So it has a private-owned water and sewage, right? So okay. the park has its own water treatment plant and sewage system. Wow, okay. And so it's not on city not water on city and sewer? Water, no, not at all. It's all, it's all private. And it's a well? Or there's three wells in there. Okay. And then it has so a sewage it has a sewage plant too, shares. right? Okay. And that was the and main why was that an issue? Well, just from what I'm reading and listening yeah. to, they always say, you know, run Avoid away. That. Run away, yeah. run away. So I'm like, okay, why do I have to run away? You know, it's like <laughs> I've made my living buying homes that people say run away from, right? So I'm not afraid to buy the house. I just gotta yeah. figure out what is my what is my worst case scenario, right? What do I need to have over here in case something, you know, goes wrong, right? So research that, you know, the permits were up to date. The, the testing was up to date, right? So there were no issues in the water or, or the sewage or anything. I, I, I contacted the testing sites. We so, this is, so you had some inspection? We had, yeah, we, had, we did a phase one. Okay. We did a phase one How environment. How much inspection time did you have? I did 30 days. Okay, and that was enough time to get through some of the, figure out your issues. Yeah. So we did, we did, we did 45 day close. Now guys, I wanna make a real, I wanna, sorry, interrupt you. I wanna make a really important thing here. He puts it under contract first. You never want to be spending all this time and due diligence if you don't actually have a deal put together first, which is okay. A lot of people are afraid to go into a deal because of unknowns. Just get yourself some inspection time. Tell, be very transparent. I'm very transparent with sellers. I say, listen, I got to figure out a bunch of stuff. I need 30 days or 60 days, so I got plenty of time to figure out the, the well and septic and all these other issues. If I find an issue, I'm going to bring it back to you and tell you, hey, I got an issue here, but give me some, give me a window of time, but I'm not going to waste my time, so let's have a contract. And so you did that, and you're in your yeah, due diligence solving problems. Yep, so you know, we bought it, put our $5,000 earnest deposit yeah. down, and now I know my, my clock starts, right? Yeah. So I got 30 days to figure out what's going on, you know? I mean, hey, the worst case scenario, we can back out, or we yeah. can go, you know, reduce the price, whatever, you know? But still, at the price we're buying it at, I'm expecting there to be some issues, right? Yeah. So understand, I'm expecting there to be something wrong, you know, wrong with, yeah. the, with the park because I'm getting it for such a good deal, you know? So I did a lot of research on, okay, what is a privately owned water treatment, you know, plant? I had no idea what that was before, yeah. you know? I, I called up the testing sites, I called up the uh, environmental agencies because they have the permits. Because you have your own site, your own water site, you're underneath the environmental protection agencies in that state. So you have okay. to have a permit by them. A lot of stuff that is probably the reason why people say run away, right? Because you don't want to- You're just asking questions, just trying asking to get to questions. the bottom. Yeah, I'm asking questions, I'm making phone calls, I'm researching stuff, you know. And for the most part, everything looks good. I mean, I, I talked to the people who tested, oh yeah, it's, it's been running well, there's no issues with the well. There's three wells, so if one goes out, we got two already there, sewer system's good, you know. It's just, hey, if it does go out, what do I have to have in reserves to be able to cover that? Because if the water does go bad, you can't have a park with no water, it's on you. You know, it's yeah, not yeah. the city coming to fix it, it's us coming to fix it, right? So we did that research. That was all good, the permits were all good. I hadn't even, I hadn't seen the park in person. I locked it up so I didn't see it. Yeah. Again, I'm in Puerto Rico, <laughs> <laughs> it's in Pennsylvania. Virtual, virtual real estate investor. So about a week and a half into the contract, my son plays football in the college 20 minutes away. We go to, we go to one of his games, so you know, me and the wife and the kids, I'm like, hey, on the way to the game, gotta stop looking at this mobile home park. And my wife's like, <laughs> Of course, we don't go anywhere without looking at a house. You know? Dad's got a deal, <laughs> just so happens to be right in town. So we go to this park. I'm not the typical person to be able to, you know, I come out the car, it's like, you know, me with my J's on, they're like, are you buying the park? I'm like, yeah, I'm buying, <laughs> I'm buying the park. So I got to sweet in the park managers and stuff, you know, come to find out, you know, they have a pig in one of their trailers. I have a farm. So I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm on a farm. I, I got pigs. I got horses too. So I, I broke the ice, right? Yeah. So now the managers are cool with me and they just start telling me everything, you know? So now I know what's going on. The manager's telling me every problem person they've had, you know, any issues, which is really good to hear up front because now you know what's kind of going on, you know, from people who are there, you know? And there wasn't too much, you know, red flags from that. The park was in a good area. There was a, um, a campground across the street. I mean, that's a good thing. So it's a campground RV park across the street. So everything looked good on paper and it looked good in sight, you know? So I'm like, hey, let's, let's move forward. Did the, um, did the cash flow from the 19 units service your private money and cost? So, that's, so basically right now, we make about 500 bucks per month. Total. Right now. Total. Okay, so it's, yeah. it's pretty much a break even right. where you're at. Okay. And that's with, you know, our, our debt, our taxes, yeah. our insurance. A lot of the, so what happened when I'm reviewing the financials, I'm like, why is this, the expenses so high? there's a lot of cost in running the water treatment plant. Uh, so there's permit costs and you're testing twice a month. And those costs, like one of our, like one of our testing um, expenses is 750 per month. So okay. $750 per month we're paying 
just for one testing site, right? So, so the play is definitely in the value add, but at least you're getting in and breaking even. You're not breaking you're, even right now. You know, a lot of deals, I'm servicing debt until some future date something happens, right? Yeah, money out, money out, money yep, out. Yep. This one's at least covering all of its expenses. Definitely. And that was a good thing, Which right? Which is cool. That's yeah, a cool that's deal. Because now it's like, now every home I'm going to bring in there, it's profit. It's profit. <laughs> you know, so you're like, you know that already. Every home I bring in there after this point is profit, right? So we get in there, we do everything. Our phase one, which is an environmental test, comes back good. And we, uh, you know, we ask ourselves again, hey, what's wrong with this? I don't think anything's wrong with it. Let's, let's move forward to close, right? So we close on that one right before the end of the year. For a limited time, you can get a free copy of Jerry Norton's Wholesaler Contract Pack with all the contracts you need to flip houses without risk. Claim your free copy at wholesalercontracts.com. So that was the main thing. We got it so cheap, and this is this is a strategy I've been doing forever. I used to sell REO properties, right, that, which is bank-owned foreclosures. And I found out that banks love to get properties off their books before the year's over. Oh yeah, or quarter, or end or, of month, yeah. but end of year for end of sure. Year's the biggest one. So we would make lowball offers in the November, promising to close before the year's over by December 31st. Yeah, <laughs> and get crazy deals every oh, year. Yeah, I've got a couple of REO agents because I buy I bought a lot of REOs through the crash, mm -hmm. and they'll call me up and they'll say, "Bank wants this one gone. They don't care the number." I'm like, "Any number." any number that as long as you can close by December 31st yeah. and I'd go in at half or wherever they were yeah, at or whatever yeah. and get it. Yeah. yeah. I was an agent working for a broker. He was the number one broker for REOs in Michigan Yeah, from 07 to like, you know, till now. And we had the Fannie Mae, the Fannie, we had all those accounts. Yeah. He'd be like, Hey, Jory, we got, this bank will take this. Can we close before the 31st? Cause they got to make their books look good. Yep. Yep. So, you know, that's, I always make low ball offers in the month of November for December. Right. So we got it because he wanted to be off his books this month. Yeah. And the son wanted to put the, you know, he wanted to move the dad into um, a community. The owner, the, the owner, mobile home yes. owner. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, 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 it was timing was everything. Timing was everything. Yep. You get into the deal, and now right now you're working on that value add. Yeah. So we get in the deal, we close the deal, um, and now our main goal is okay. We want to just bring in more homes, right? So we asked the managers. We have on-site managers who we've kind of kept in place as of right now. They're still doing the management of it. We said, you know, what's the main issue? Why it's it's, it's so vacant? They said, well, the owner doesn't advertise. He hasn't advertised them bringing anybody in here in, you know, seven years. Are there homes on those other lots or do you got to bring there's homes in? There's only one vacant home. So the rest of the lots are, are empty. So, okay, so you got to no bring, home. so you got to buy and bring home. So buy guys, if you're watching, if you got a good deal on a mobile home that can transport, Jory's a buyer. I'm, I'm looking. I'm on Facebook Marketplace, <laughs> Craigslist. I'm on it every day. <laughs> will you go, will you go outside of Pennsylvania? Or is I will, it? yeah. Okay. Definitely will. So any, any, I mean, yeah, shipping's yeah. the big thing, right? I mean, it's not the cheap to ship those things. Yeah. What is it? 10 grand to ship one? Depending on how far you are. Okay, yeah. I've heard there. it's about 10 grand, you know, to move one. It's about 7 to 10 grand. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's not, it's not cheap, you know. So I will say if you're anywhere surrounding Pennsylvania, Ohio, the Midwest area, let me know if you have anything for sale. We definitely are looking to, you know, we need to fill, uh, we need to bring in 32 more. So. Yeah, a lot of, <laughs> you know, so. So I'll put Jory's info below, but guys, if you know of a deal, Jory's a buyer. Yep. You'll even buy from wholesalers, right? If they know of a deal. I buy from wholesalers all the time. As long right? as the I mean, numbers work. Right now, my main marketing is wholesalers. I'm not even marketing anymore. You know, I, I talk to Pace and Jamil, and they're, yeah. they're, they're students right. bringing most of my deals, you know? <laughs> I know. That's me. I have a finder program. It's amazing because yeah, like, people bring you deals. Yep. So we go in there, and again, so our main goal of what we do in real estate is we own or finance, right? So this is what we do with our single family homes. I have multi units that we own or finance out to end buyers. So again, it's the same exact process, right? Affordable housing, right? Find out what the rent is in the area, sell the house for a little bit under rent and owner finance it. And so we talked to the managers and they're like, oh, we got five people right now. You know, if you guys that, will that finance own. Yeah, if you can finance a forum, we have five right now that'll buy it, you know? So we have a list already of a waiting list of people who are ready to move in there. The hardest part is finding the homes, you know? Yeah. So our main goal is we're gonna buy the homes, get them in there. We're gonna charge them lot rent, which another thing, our lot rent was, was low. So the rent was 195. Did you raise rents on the existing? The owner already had a raise coming in to 225 in January, and then it goes to 250 in July. Okay, so right? he was so trying. So they already yeah. had that in there, which good. is good. So now you're not the bad guy. We have to do that, right? We, we'll probably, <laughs> our goal is to get it to 300 bucks, okay. right? Which is normal for that area. Um, and then we're gonna owner finance the homes out so that the people can have the lot rent in the home. They, they can be around that eight, 850 mark, right? Which is pretty much what the, the going rate is for, you know, okay. rent, rent in the area, right? So we'll, we'll bring the homes in. What we'll do is we'll charge the, the new homeowners the lot rent, right? From the mobile home park community. Mm -hmm. And then our other company will own or finance the actual trailer to them. And then we'll make the principal and interest on the trailer that we do. On the Good, because remember guys, the lot is separate from the trailer. They're two distinct things. It's not like normal real estate. They're detached, right? So- And banks don't want to loan no. to mobile home park owners who own 
uh, the actual trailers, right? Yeah. They want to own the value in the land and the lot rent. They don't want to see you owning a lot of trailers. Yeah. So that's good anyway. So then you're going to owner finance the trailers. So will they pay lot rent and then their, their owner finance on the trailer? They'll pay both, yeah. Okay, they'll and they'll pay be both. Two, again, two separate companies, right? The lot rent will go to the mobile home park, and then the mortgage will go to a, a servicing company that's yeah, going to yeah. service the notes. Yeah. Yep. But technically, if they wanted to pick their trailer up and move it, they could. They could. Yeah, because yep. they own the trailer yeah, yeah. now on owner Yes, finance. they own the trailer. Now, they can move it. They'll still pay us, you know, what they pay us, but they'll, they can move the trailer. The trailer's not a fix They won't. There. They're not going to no, do well, this, Here's <laughs> the good thing about when I research mobile home parks, right, because they have a stigma, right? They always yeah. have a stigma. Oh, trailer parks, tra and it's really not. There are some very, very nice ones to yeah. some that aren't that nice, but at the end of the day, I mean, the stigma is not really what it should be, right? Yeah. So. The Real Estate Funding Kit is out now. Learn how to get 100% funding for all your deals without dealing with the banks. Claim your free copy at myfundingkit.com. You can't create more mobile home parks, right? Like you can't build them. Like, new, like most communities don't even want them there because the tax income on it is so low. They don't give you a permit to go build a new mobile home. So it's a limited supply thing. Limited supply, right? We already know housing is so unaffordable in a lot of parts right now. So it's, again, it's affordable housing, right? There's a demand for it from the consumer. And where you can own and finance it out because they're hard to get finance, right? Yeah. There, there are programs coming on the market now to make it easier. And that's one thing I saw. A lot of, if you look at the guys like, you know, of course, Warren Buffett, a lot of the big hedge funds are pouring money into mobile home parks. Yeah. <laughs> and I always follow where they're pouring money into. Well, think about it too. The, the national median home price is now 400000 Yeah. Like affordable housing is going to be a big deal. And then when you have the work remote thing going on since yes. the pandemic, people are moving to the, the Rust Belt, like the Ohio and, you know, the, the yeah, moving to the Midwest where things are below the median. And mobile home parks are going to become that much more valuable because... There's going to be a point here where you just people first time buyers can't afford to buy. They're priced out, right? Yeah, they're they're going to be priced out of what the the normal, like you said the median the start of the home market they're priced out of, right? That mobile home park is going to become more appealing to them, yeah. right? So, and, and think it's it's different than an apartment complex. You have a lot, you have land, right? You have more of that nature stuff where you're not stuffed a little up. More freedom. You know, you have yeah. more freedom, right? And you and then you can make it nice. We have to go in and make it nice. You know, we're changing the mailboxes, paving the roads put nice signs out there, you know, mm -hmm. make it so like, hey, we're gonna come in here, put money into, we want it to be a nice park, right? But again, my whole thing is that if the market does turn, which one day it has to turn, I mean, who knows? <laughs> who God. knows when it will? <laughs> but, but the Can't way keep that... <laughs> going forever like this, yeah. <laughs> but when it does turn, that, that, that demographic actually does better. Yeah. Right, it does better in downturns. It gets more demand that goes there, and you're not dropping off. Like you don't really see prices drop that much because it's already at a certain point where yeah. you, you know, 10% drop on a you know fifty thousand dollar house is five grand. 10% drop on a five hundred grand house, you know, yeah. is a bigger is a bigger difference. So your play though is you're gonna you're gonna fill this park up, you're gonna sell the trailers on owner finance, you're gonna increase the lot rents. At some point, you're gonna have this thing operating at ninety percent capacity or whatever, and now you've got a really well operated you get some financials behind it but you're gonna have a nice operation that then you can do a couple things right yeah, we can do a couple extra strategies right we can then we can then sell it because like, like i just said there are lots there is demand for mobile home parks it's crazy and they're paying high prices for like low cap rates in a mobile home park mm -hmm. right now you know i think the cap, want to yeah, the cap rate has shrink from like it used to be like 12 to 15 percent now they're like six to seven percent you know if it's ran right if, yeah. if it's ran right right so you can sell at a high cost you know or we can refinance take our private money out you know, even you know, we can pull cash out and refinance, yeah. right? And then just hold on to it. Because you know? a because a bank will do a loan on something like that. Will they look at that as a commercial loan now, as a as the whole park? As the whole park. Yeah. 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 And so they'll do a commercial loan. They're going to want to look at your financials, but if if the numbers are there and it's it's a loan to value, it's a cash thing. If you can prove the financials and show you're operating this thing right. And you like can, you said, now you're into four percent money, right? Exactly. Long term. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right now we're in ten percent money with yeah. our private money. You know, four percent money long term fixed rate. I mean, that's you know that's kind of what you want to bank your head on, right? And like you said, you can refinance, pull money out without having to pay taxes on it because there's no taxable event. Yeah. And you know, so it depends. I mean, hey, what can we get for for selling it, or can we hold it? We we like to hold stuff, you know. Yeah. So we're gonna look at the hold first. But if you get an offer, you can't refuse. I mean, <laughs> you know, just just sell it, yeah. do it all over again. What so. do you think uh, on average you'll spend on trailers to bring them in there? If I can buy them used, which I'm trying to do, um, with the rehab, mm -hmm. we're trying to be at about 20, okay. 20,000. So yeah. maybe a beat up one for 10 or something, yeah. you know, but, yeah. but all in on 20. And these are how big on average? So we're looking, we want to have two, three bedroom ones, okay. right? Because the one bedroom ones, you know, are not, yeah. but they're usually single wides, you know, so. So can you do a three bedroom, two bath on those or no? Three. 
or is that too much? I think a double wide, you can do a three two. Okay. Right. Single so these will be a three, two, one. a three one. Three one. Okay. If we do double, which we might do some double wise, you know, yeah. three two. Get a little higher round. Get a little higher. Then we can probably owner finance them for 45, yeah. 50 grand. You know? So you're all in for 20, owner financing for 40, 45, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that makes that 40 grand with their lot rent and their payment, it's still going to be an affordable price for the actual yeah. homeowner. You know? So you guys, you get that. He wants to make their total payment less than the market rent. So less. it's an incentive. I get to own it and save a couple hundred dollars than if I was renting and don't own it. Correct. That's yeah. the trick. That's with, the trick because you look at owner finance. You're, so when you do owner finance, you're actually looking at renters for the most part. You're looking at yeah. tenants, right? That's your buyer. You know, yeah. your buyers are tenants, right? So your tenants saying, uh, "Can I pay rent here, or I can buy this house, right, yeah. at a higher interest rate, but I can own the house here?" You know, so yeah, you're going to the tenant and saying, "Hey, right now you're paying twelve fifty. How about how would you like to pay eight fifty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. If you could get that low, then they definitely would do it. You know, so, yeah. And then, you know, they're paying an interest rate over, you know, 30 years, whenever you amortize it. And, you know, you, you want to give them a little bit of cushion because when you become a tenant to a homeowner, now you have to pay taxes. You do have repairs, right? So you want to make, you, our main goal is that they can afford the house and stay in the house. Right? Make it win for them. Yeah, nothing's worth, you, you can't, if you stretch them so tight, I did this before when I was in Metro Detroit on low income, is I would, I would, I would put them in it, but they, they couldn't really afford home ownership. So then they're still calling me when the furnace goes out and they're like, yeah, I get I own it, Jerry, but I still don't have the money for the furnace. You know what happens? Ah, oh, I put the furnace yeah, in. You put the furnace <laughs> in and then you tag it onto the back end and the, it becomes exactly. a circle where you're, you're just a landlord again, right? right. Yeah, I'm back <laughs> to being a landlord. I'm a glorified, yeah. it's, I'm a glorified landlord. Yeah. I get a lot of new, new investors who say, they send me a deal, hey, here's the numbers, right? You want to buy this deal? And I'm like, hey, your, your payment to your end buyer it's too high, yeah. right? Yeah, okay, maybe the rent's 1200 bucks and you're, you're, you're charging 1250 right? Or you're charging 1150 but the reason why they're struggling with rent is because they can't afford that, right? Yeah. We need to get to a point where, you know, it's affordable to them that they can afford it. And that's what I mean. I tell them on the phone, look, what can you afford? Because I don't, I don't want this house back, you know? Yeah. I, I don't, the last thing I want to do is be somebody who has to take a house back from somebody, Because you stretched right? them too tight, You know, yeah. so like, if you can win and you can make those payments easily, then we all win, you know? So yeah. it becomes on me to find the house at a cheap enough price where it makes sense for me and for them. Guys, this is, if you think about this though, I mean, Jory, keep in touch with me. I'd love to hear when you finally get to your, how, how long do you think you can get this thing turned around? How long do you think it'll take? I mean, we're, we're being conservative, right? Yeah. So we're saying probably two to three years. Okay, you know? yeah. Yeah. We would like to get from, from right now we're at 20, we like to be like 15, you know, it's okay. like 35 into this, you know, middle of next year and then another. Th another. But guys, this could be a, a massive value add. I mean, you, you could be creating s such huge equity through cash flow, keep this thing or flip it. I mean, if you flip it, this is a multiplier of, you know, a lot yeah. off of your 165 <laughs> buy, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you got costs to acquire trailers and yeah. so on, but still, mm -hmm. you're going to be... Whatever you end up doing with this on your exit, whether you keep it with long-term debt or flip it, this is a major play. Major. It is. It's one of those awesome like, yeah. It's one of those deals where like, man, this is like, like, like we said, everything we add now is profit, right? Because yeah. we're already breaking even, you know. So, I tell people this, Jory. Maybe you agree with it, but if you, it's all about getting in the game, you know. Like, how did Jory get this deal? He put a post on Facebook. No, it's not that. What it is is he's putting himself out there because he's in the game. And when you're in the game, meaning you're pounding the pavement, you're looking for deals all the time. When you're in the game and you're off the sidelines, the deal of a lifetime comes around, you know, every month or so, right? It like, does because you're, you're, I mean, you're consistently looking for deals, right? Like whatever you do all the time will, will come to you. It's the energy, right? So if I'm always looking for deals, which what we're doing, you know, you, you're going to, you're just, just by the universe, the something's going to something's gonna cross your plate, right? From so. someone outside, they're like, wow, you know, he got lucky with that home run. No, he didn't. He's in the game. And when you're in the game, those lucky deals, those home run deals just come every month or so, right? So go to eightweekacademy.com to claim your free copy of Jerry Norton's most popular training. In it, he reveals his blueprint for making $100,000 per year with real estate. So guys, get in the game. I hope you got excited. I hope this kind of, you know, opened up your mind to some different possibilities. Super cool. You can make this play on mobile homes, doing really creative stuff, amazing deal. Never done a mobile home deal. It's about solving problems, figuring things out, and now you're in this amazing deal. So love that. Thank you, Jory, for sharing that. I hope you guys got a lot of value. Leave a comment and say, Jory, you're a flipping genius. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, and thank you for breaking that down and sharing all those details. Again, we'll put Jory's information below if you want to reach out to him. We'll we'll put his social in there and make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel and and uh, get in his world. So thanks again. Thank you guys. We'll see you on the next video.